Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachachodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom this world England calls God, the Holy One of Israel, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and peace and mercy to the elect, those men that are doing this work in sincerity and in truth across the four corners of the earth, presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice. Uh, much love to the uh, innumerable multitude of you believers out there, you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Seminole Indians, Hispanics, Native Americans, and those that are scattered abroad, uh, you Israelite foreigners. To you all, I say show on greetings. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. All right, so um, this lesson is, is talking about two things in one. Well, it's really the same thing, but, you know, I got two different instances. So, uh, first, I, I was just reading over this uh, Leviticus, the 21st chapter, and um, it talks about Aaron, right, which is Moses's brother, you know, a Levite, and about how his, you know, Aaron was the high priest and how his descendants um, ultimately couldn't have uh, defects, you know, it really is, uh, you know, going to Levitical unclean, uncleanliness, okay, Um you know, and I want to I want to mention a couple of those. I got a few of those in the Hebrew, but I have something more important after I explain these. Uh, the message after is far more important than uh, just what the things that I that I speak on this first part. All right. Um, this is Leviticus 21 and 17. It says, speak unto Aaron, saying, whosoever he be of thy seed and their generations that hath any blemish. Let him not approach approach to offer the breath of his power. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach. A blind man or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose or anything superfluous. Okay, uh, and it, it goes on to say more. Um, you know, but I, I wanted to talk about that. So it talks about, it says, he shall not approach. And so the, when you had these, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, when you had the the high holy, the uh, the temple. When you had the temple, all right. Let me. I'm gonna keep reading on. Actually, then I'm gonna jump to my points. It says, or a man that is broken footed, or is broken handed, or crook back, or a dwarf, or that hath a blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scabbed, or hath his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron. Excuse me. I skipped over it. They have the seed of Aaron. The priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord Yahweh made by fire. He hath the blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his power. He shall eat the bread of his power, both of the most holy and of the holy. Only he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, because he hath the blemish that he profane, profane not my sanctuaries. For I, the Lord Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, do sanctify him. All right. So you had the layers to the veil, right? You couldn't go. I mean, the layers of the, of the temple, you know, when you had the temple set up, he couldn't go into the inner curtain. He couldn't approach the altar, right? Because this would defile uh, the Lord's temple, right? And he, he says, I do sanctify them. Those are to both holy and separate and set apart, you know, but the Lord didn't, you know, condemn you because of these things, you know, um, but I want to get some of these in Hebrew before I go to my next part. So the word here I have for, uh, let's see, for, uh, uh, was this for blind man? Oh, no, 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 it's not blind man. This is for a flat nose. Let me, let me go. To, I guess I'll come back to that one for, I'll come back to that one. I had them in certain order. So blind man, the word for blind is I war, I war, right? And I thought that was interesting because when you think of light, light is O war, but this is I war, which means to be blind, okay? Not being able to see. And I got some important stuff on blindness too coming up, right? It says, uh, or be lame. Um, you know, it, it didn't give me much information on lame, but lame ultimately means like you have some sort of defect in your body, you know, somebody who's like a paraplegic, right? They can't, they, they're they not able to move their, their limbs. They can't move their legs. That's somebody who's lame. 
And there's somebody in a wheelchair, you know, and they can't walk. That's somebody who's lame, okay? You know, and it's crazy because in school, for somebody that was like not cool or, you know, a loser, or they would call you lame, which means that you don't got it. Like, you know, you corny. But really, lame goes into somebody that's uh, physically damaged, if you will, okay? It says, uh, or he that had the flat nose. So, you know, a flat nose, it had uh, different uh, terms for it. Like, uh, you know, it says right here, the word haram. You know, when I thought of haram, you know, you always have Ishmael saying haram. But it says haram, haram. It says to ban, devote, destroy, utterly, completely destroy, dedicate for destruction, exterminate, to prohibit for common use ban. So this is probably where they get haram from. All right. It says to consecrate, devote, dedicate for destruction. Yep. Um, but then when you go down on that word, it also mentions somebody whose nose is flat. Like, you know, and I've seen people with like a super flat nose. It's like, let me, let me actually, let me look up something real quick. You know, uh, flat nose. But see, these are all uh, Levitical uncleanliness from Yahweh Basham Shah. Uh, see, so like some of these people, you can just tell they got they getting surgeries and shit. See, now in 2023, you can't even look up flat nose. Um, let me see, because everybody, it's all about women getting nose jobs. This is crazy. Uh, hey, you can't even look it up properly. Babylon, everything is about nose jobs and makeup. This is crazy. All right, but somebody who got a fl incredibly flat nose, there's a difference. You know, and then you brothers probably have seen it before. But nonetheless, continuing on. All right, so, and then it says, or anything superfluous. So the word there for superfluous, that word is shirai. And it says, to extend, to stretch out, to stretch oneself, right? To prolong, deform by excess of members. So somebody who might have an extra, extra, uh, extra finger on their hand, uh, somebody whose limbs may be way longer than it's supposed to be, you know, somebody who got, a, uh, you know, like I do had elephantitis. It's a, it says it's to stretch out a member that's too long, especially the ear. So somebody got a super long ear. So when they be having them, uh, those elves always, you always see elves in movies, Right. And they always try to show you like the elf is good and enlightened and they got the wealth and the, the technology and the, the wisdom. But really, they're all Levitically unclean. Well, they're unclean, according to the Bible. Right. Those long, that long extended ear like that. Those, those people, the Heavenly Father would consider Levitically unclean. Right. And so uh, that's how you know that this stuff is off. It's in contrary to the Lord. But now. I want to say, just because, so this is when the more important part is about to kick in momentarily, but just because you have one of these things does not mean the Lord can't have mercy on you. It doesn't mean that the Lord can't heal you, all right? And and that's really the more important part, but I want to go into, you know, how, what Tobit did, what the Lord, what our Lord Yahweh Shah did and what Tobit did, all right? Uh, first, it says, oh, it says oh, somebody that's broken-footed or broken-handed, all right? And, um... The word break is Shabar. I like that word. I always like the word Shabar, but it says Shabar. Breaking, fracturing, crush, fracture, crushing, breach, crash, ruin, shattering. You know, so somebody of, it says even breaking of a dream. <laughs> you know, you can put Shabar in your curses, you know. But, um, so when you got a broken hand or a broken foot, that's Levitically unclean. You got a broken hand or a broken foot. Broken hand is Shabar Yad. You know, I believe foot is Rick. What is it? Ragai? Let me let me look up foot real quick. That's gonna change my path off that a little bit, but should be okay. Foot. I think it's something that starts with a Ra. Let me see here. Foot. Yeah, Regal. Yep, yep, Regal. Call it up. I show my shot. 
So, you know, uh, Shabar, Regal, or Regal, Shabar, broken foot. Okay. Let me go back to Leviticus 18. I believe that was 18. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I think it's 21. But, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Yahweh Shah, he's coming back with healing in his wings for those that are Israelites to undo a lot of these things, man. It says, or crook back or a dwarf or that had the blemish in his eye or be scurvy or scabbed or have his stones broken, right? So crook back is somebody who looks like, for anybody that's familiar with the hunchback of Notre Dame, right? That word there is gabon, right? Gabon, somebody who has a, 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 a crook back, you know, or you, have you seen a hunchback of Notre Dame or Dom? Or um, what's that other one? Uh, uh, three hundred. In the movie Three Hundred, there was a guy named Fieltis, and he had a crook back. He was a hunchback, right? And he wasn't allowed to even come and fight, you know. So that was spiritual too. Okay. Um. For so Gabon for crook back, the word for dwarf is doc doc a donaqua doc. And it says, usually thin, small, fine, gaunt, dwarf, little thing, you know, but like the imp that's on uh, um, on Game of Thrones, right? He 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 plays a, a dwarf, you know, or dwarf like on uh, Lord of the Rings. That's a that's Levitical uncleanness, right? It says, or he that had the blemish in his eye. So I thought this one was interesting. So the word for uh, blemish there is... Uh, Thabalaw, Thabalaw, and it says obscurity, def defect in vision, confusion. It says a cataract in the eye. And this is funny because, not funny, but I, I would, so with my occupation, I hear a lot of people talk about uh, cataracts and how they had cataracts all the time. They got an obscurity, they got blurriness, they got whiteness in their eyes, you know? And uh, the word for scurvy, is garab, okay, and it says an itch or a scab, meaning a scratch, itching, you know, so somebody who got like a permanent uh, skin, like, you know, sometimes even maybe even eczema, you know, sometimes eczema, right? But now, you know, obviously this is for Aaron's sons, but also we're a nation of kings and priests, you know, and uh, we got certain things that ailments and things that's bothering us, but hey, if you put your, your love and your your joy and your mind on your how about your mouth shot, everything's going to be all right. All right. So uh, the next one for, uh, what was it, for scabbed, it says the word there is yalapath. It says a scab, a skin sore, scales, scurf, and eruptive disease. So I, I don't know what, what time I saw it. Like you can have somebody like, it's almost like they're getting like skin disease or like gook on top of their body and they have to like scoop it off they got sometimes their skin goes with it too they got like scoop it off and that's what it's talking about by somebody that's scabbed okay uh it says uh meaning to stick or scrape scrape or tether you know getting that extra skin off okay and uh then it says some or somebody to be broken in the stones you know we always bring out deuteronomy 23 and one i think you know one and two you know a man that's Injured in his stones, cannot make it into the kingdom of heaven. You know, and the, uh, you know, and hey, man, this now this of all the ones, this might be the one you might not be able to undo. You know, we talk about healing. All of those other things can be healed to a to a degree. Maybe not a dwarf. He can be, but you know, Lord can make him taller. A man can change his stature. But this this uh, you cut your rod off, you cut your your your, your testes off. Ain't man, you just gotta you gotta take that missile and then we'll see you in the kingdom. You know, you can't be no uh transformer out here thinking that you can just do what you want and then everything is gonna be cool. But the word there for uh uh stones is not a bond like stone. It's not stones as in like rock stones or metal. It's the word there is a shock, not eye shock, a shock. A a sha and uh it says testicle. Right, so that that's what. So you can't. All of those are technically considered Levitical uncleanness. It says he shall not approach. You know, but you know, I was talking about that thing. But the Lord let us know that He was coming back to heal 
our people, you know, starting with the elect. And so he was doing so. Let me get a couple of these verses. This is Mark 8 and 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. He so they like, so they like, Lord, touch him, heal him. It says, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. All right. And it was funny, because, not funny. Once again, I'm just using the terminology. We saw a blind man yesterday, you know, and we, we you know, me and a few of the brothers, you know, it's kind of like you feel a place of compassion for him because that dude was always, I've seen a few times, that dude was always like polite, you know, could tell he going through, he just be wanting a little, a little food and a little coins. But, you know, you can tell he's going through it, but he, he's still a polite man. And I pray the Lord have mercy on him, honestly. You know, he always got his little sign up, you know, and got his stick. You know, but it says, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw it. And he looked at him and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. This is beautiful, man. It says, and he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. All right. So, of course, he went and, you know, <laughs> told him he could see now who did this to you. And that was always the case with Yahweh Shai, man. You know, but uh, people, all the marvelous works he was doing, people were singing to the roof. You know, screaming to the heavens, giving praise to Yahweh Shai. This is a... Uh, uh, similar story. Now, this is the same story, but I just want to give a little bit more context. This is John 9 and 1. And as Yahweh passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Yahweh answered, Neither hath his man, this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of Yahweh should be made manifest in him. Call all Yahweh Shai. Those are the type of things we're going to be seeing, brothers. It's some people that's out here that's hurting, that's going through things, but it's so that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh power, his works can be made manifest. Uh, we do, when the men of the Lord start healing these different people around the earth, it says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And right now the Lord, Yahweh Shai, he's still in the world. His spirit is here, right? But he's the true light of the world, man. All right, the word made flesh. It says, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. So when they say he spat in his eyes, you know what I mean? He, you know, he sat up and hawked the loogie in his face. That's disrespectful. The Lord spit on the ground and they put his spit on his eyes. He said, he made clay of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And you see, that that seems far-fetched to people. But this is, the type, this is how you know Christians don't really believe. So you know people in the world don't really believe. We're telling you that we're going to be able to do these type of things where you can take your spit. How that, how much value is Yahweh Shai with his whole, from the, the the sole of his foot to the highest hair on his head? How glorious is he if his spit can turn a man from blind to seeing, man? All right, that's glorious, man. That's a man truly endowed by Yahweh Shai. And he said, my men shall do greater. Okay, this is Matthew 15 to 30. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Yahweh Shah's feet, and he healed them. See, so Yahweh Shah is going to be, he was healing many, many people. All right, many, many people. And hey, the elect are going to be doing the same thing, following after Yahweh Shah, man. So all those that may have been Levitical, Levitically unclean, they're going to be healed and they're going to be kept and they're going to be giving praise to Yahweh Bashem Shah. They're going to be calling on his name. Matthew 21 and 14, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. You see, so the Lord was constantly healing people, man. All right. He was constantly healing people. And we're constantly healing people right now through the word. We're healed, Lord willing, by this word, man. You know, Acts 8, 7. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice come out of many that were possessed with them, and many take with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Okay? You see, so the Lord was healing many, many people. The disciples were many, healing many, many people. 
when we go out and we teach this word, it's to heal people. That's why I was talking to a brother the other day. This word is not meant to truly, it, it condemns people. But the main part is the healing that he's going to do for the nation of Israel. And after that, for the earth, you know. But since they don't understand, with their wickedness, things get lost in in, in, in a translation. People don't want to hear us. We're not of theirs. We're not of the world. So they don't understand it. But many people are going to be healed in the name of Yahweh by Shemasha. Countless people. Second Ezra 2 and 21. Heal the broken and the weak. And first, we're broken and weak in spirit. Right? Now you got to heal that a part of a man first. You know? And then through your belief, the physical can be healed. Laugh not a man. Laugh not a lame man to scorn. Defend the maimed and let the blind man come into the sight of my clearness. Right? So at the sight of his clearness is ultimately seeing his word as the truth. Okay? And so the Lord was always... Uh, when he made sacrifices, it always had to be a, a lamb or the first year, you know, things like that. It couldn't have blemishes in it. He don't want any bad sacrifices. He wanted sacrifices that were whole and beautiful and perfect and complete, you know. But nonetheless, if you believe in this truth, the Lord can heal you from your those uncleanliness too. It can give give you sight, just like he gave us sight. So that now we see the truth, man. Okay? Um, this is... Uh, Mark 2 and 17, when Yahweh heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So those that can see this word and, and, and have that godly sorrow, the Lord is calling you to return and, you know, come come get healed through the spirit. So then the healing of the flesh will come soon after. All right. So I want to get Tobit because Tobit, Healed his father ultimately. It happened through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shah. But Tobit healed his father. Uh, this is Tobit two and nine. It says the same night also I returned from my from the burial, and slept by the wall of my courtyard, being polluted, and my face was uncovered, and I knew not that there were sparrows in the wall. And mine eyes being open, the sparrows muted warm dung into my eyes, and the whiteness came in my eyes. And I went to the physicians. But they helped me not. Moreover, Achaeacharis did nourish me until I went into Elimaeus. All right. And so uh, when this happened, if, so if you don't know about bird dung, you know, it's funny. Uh, I keep saying it's funny. But, you know, when I was younger, something happened to me with bird dung. I used to have this real big afro. And one time I was walking home from school and bird dung fell in the top of, right in the mac, smack dab middle of my afro while I was walking home from school. And I'm telling you, you talking about a burning sensation. Man, it was my hot, my head, and it was like summertime. So the sun was extra piercing. It's, but it's like my head like set on fire and I just start running for the house. I ran for the house like up the street, darting, ah, like, ah, ah, yelling. I run to the bath. The first thing I did, run to the tub, put my head down in there and get it out. But it's like my head was burning. So, you know, a uh, bird dung has, uh, like, acidity. It's acidic. So that's what made Tobit go blind. So Tobias, and I might have said Tobit healed his father. I meant Tobias healed his father, Tobit. Okay? Um... And see, he had uh, kinsmen that were inquiring about him once Tobit went out, right? Tobit, Tobit 7 and uh, 3, it says, And Raguel said, Ask them, From whence are ye, brethren, to whom they say we are the sons of Nephtali, which are Neph Naphtali, which are the captives in Nineveh? Then he said unto them, Do you know Tobit, our kinsman? And they said, We know him. Then said he, Is he in good health? And they said, He is both alive and in good health. And Tobias said, He is my father. Then Raguel leaped up and kissed him and wept and blessed him and said unto him, Thou art the son of an honest and good man. But when he had heard that Toby was blind, he was sorrowful and wept. You know, so it was a sad thing to hear that uh, uh, he was he was blind. You know, you don't want to hear that about your cousin, you know, somebody that you care about that they blinded. But the mercy of the Lord, things are done for the mercy of Yahweh Hashem Al Shai's sake. Okay. Let me see here. Uh, so, so Tobit, 
I'm going I'm to read this first. Tobit, uh, you know, I'm going to get to the point and then I'm going to jump back and do that, do it in that direction. This is Tobit uh, 11. Hold on, let me, did I, did I take a picture of that one? Yeah, Tobit 11 and verse uh 11, it says, and took hold of his father, and he strake of the gall on his father's eyes, saying, Be of good hope, my father. And when his eyes began to smart, he rubbed them, and the whiteness peeled away from the corners of his eyes. And he saw his, and when he saw his son, he fell upon his neck, right? So he started hugging him, you know, you know he kissed him, you know, hugging him, embracing him. It says, and he wept and said, Blessed art thou, O Yahweh, and blessed is thy name forever, the grand name. And blessed are all thine holy angels, for thou hast scourged and hast taken pity on me. For behold, I see my son Tobias. And his son went in rejoicing and told his father the great things that happened to him in Media. Then Tobin went out to meet his daughter-in-law at the gate of Nineveh, rejoicing and praising Yahweh. And they which saw him go marveled because he had received his sight. So it was a marveling thing to see Tobit, uh, Tobias, I mean, Tobit healed again to be able to see. That was an amazing moment. And we're going to see those amazing moments. But I'm going to go back real quick to Tobit 6 and 8. It says, as for the gall, it is good to anoint a man. Hold on, let me see. Let me go back here. Tobit 6. Yeah, had Tobit 6 and, uh, and 2. It says, And when the young man went down to wash himself, talking about Tobias, a fish leaped out of the river and would have devoured him. Then the angel said unto him, Take the fish. And the young man laid a hold of the fish and drew it to land. To whom the angel said, Open the fish and take the heart and the liver and the gall and put them up safely. So he had to keep them safely. The, the heart and the liver was for to keep the demons away from him. Uh, that was trying to plague, that was killing all the men that was plaguing the wife. But this is how you know the angel is going to be there to help you in time of need and direct you and give you where, where other men were, where it fell short, right? But jumping down to verse 8, as for the gall, it is good to anoint a man that hath whiteness in his eyes and he shall be healed. So, you know, and this was, it turned out to be Raphael, um, but uh, one of the four holy angels, one of the, I mean, yeah, one of the uh, holy angels, seven holy angels, Right, but um, he he told him that, but at the time, Tobias might not have thought, oh, I can heal my father with it. He just held it up for him, you know. But then, as the story goes on, you know, he basically ended up discovering that he could, he could heal his father, and he had faith in that, had hope in that. He saw the demon go away with his with his wife, Anna, you know. And so now he healed his father, man. So, you know how beautiful a feeling that is to heal somebody that you care about, somebody you love, like your father, to see him be able to see again? And you know that your Bashim al Shah did it. You know, so we're coming into those times where we're about to see great healings. You know, yeah, we can do stuff and see, like, people getting condemned and jacked up. But, man, we want to see the power and the healings more than we want to see, uh, you know, Jay get, get dim, condemned. Because in the end of the day, it says, Marvel not how the wicked is going to be punished, but you know, rather rejoice, you know, inquire about how the righteous are going to be saved, you know? So we we want to see all of this this mayhem and stuff about to go down, but we want to know that our brothers and our, our hopeful loved ones are taken care of and, and looked after and blessed by your help, Hashem, Hashem. So, you know, I just wanted to get that out through the Spirit. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh, Shai, Bahasham, Rechakodash, Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and mercy to the elect. Until next time, shalom.